Welcome to the Strong for Performance podcast, where we give coaches and consultants practical ideas for taking you to the next level in your business and in your life. I'm your host, Meredith Bell. I interview experts who've walked in your shoes and offer real world experience that you can apply to your own journey. Welcome to another episode of the Strong for Performance podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Bell, and I'm so excited today to have with me Katie Bishop. Katie, welcome to my show. Oh, Meredith, thank you so much for having me today. Well, like so many people that I've had on my program, Katie and I met on LinkedIn, (laughs) and I am so glad that we did because she has such an interesting background and i'm excited to talk to her about something i haven't discussed really in conversations with anyone else katie Uh, but before we reveal what that's going to be let me give listeners a little bit of an introduction katie is the author with her father of a new book called the best seller and what's interesting is is katie herself is not the expert in sales her dad is so this was an interesting collaboration Um, katie is in the uh, life sciences sales underwriting business and she provides comprehensive insurance coverage for for clinical trials and medical device industry Uh, she's been in various sales roles throughout her life and i think it's safe to say katie you feel like you're still a student and still learning all the time right absolutely and her passion now is helping young adults navigate their careers and especially helping them build strong relationships and i love that of course because katie i'm very focused on building long-term relationships Uh, with both our clients and anyone in my network. And so what we want to explore today that I think is going to be very uh, educational and very intriguing for all my listeners is we want to talk about the journey that Katie and her father went through over the course of five years creating this book because it's fascinating and I think there are so many takeaways related to this whole idea of relationship building within a family, right. in your case, <laughs> but also you know, friends, professional relationships. There are so many applications of what the two of you worked through and dealt with in your process that I think are relevant to anyone who must work with others, which is all of us, right? Mm -hmm. We live with other people or we work with other people. And so I just think this is going to be a fascinating discussion. So thank you again for joining me, Katie. Absolutely. Thank you, Meredith. So what I want to start out with is a question that gets us some context. Oh, and here is Katie's new book, The Best Seller. And what I want to do is get you to describe for us the initial phase of what caused you and your father to decide to write this book in the first place. It's a perfect question. And to answer it, I'll go back to the beginning, which was, Many years ago, I received some LinkedIn messages from some acquaintances in Iowa. I'm, I live in Colorado now. And they asked me, hey, what can I give to your father as a thank you for him teaching me his curriculum? Now, I know that my dad has been a mentor to so many throughout his entire life. But this was the first mention of any sort of curriculum. And I thought, I have no idea what they're talking about, and this is my dad. I need to know this. So I called my dad, and I asked him, hey, what? I hear that you've developed some curriculum for, with your mentors, or with your mentees, those you're mentoring. I said, what's, what's going on with that? He said, well, actually, to tell you the truth, we're going to write a book. I said, <laughs> and I wish my first thought was joy for my dad in writing a book, but to be totally honest, I my first thought was, he's writing a book and he's writing it without me? <laughs> because he knew I'd written a few children's books and I'd shared that with my parents and I love writing. And 
so for him to write a book, I knew that he wasn't going to do it by himself. He's a very strong auditory learner, but not necessarily a very strong reader or writer. And so I thought, okay, well, who are you writing this book with? And he said, oh, two young guys that I mentor. And I became a little jealous because I thought, well, am I not good enough to write this book with you? I didn't say that, but that's just, you know, the thought that came across. Sure. And so instead of saying that, I said, oh, well, how did that come to be? And he said, well, I was mentoring these two young men and they said, you know, Doug, you need to write a book. This is really, really good stuff. And he said, well, I'm not going to write a book. Why don't you write the book with me? And so that's how they started this process. And after I learned that, I sat back and I said, you know what? Great for them. Because that kickstarted my dad to start to truly work on what he was teaching and develop this curriculum. And I thought, you know, this was a great idea that these two um, mentees that my dad had spurred on him to action. And um, so I said, oh, that is, you know what? That is great. I'm so glad you're doing that. Keep me updated. I'd love to hear. I also want to know what this curriculum is because I don't think I've heard it. <laughs> and I'm your daughter, so I feel like I might want to know. <laughs> so that's how it started. But then it was about six months later, and I checked in, and he said, you know what, Katie? The guys said that I were at a stopping place, and now I need to hire a writer. And they said it's going to cost X thousands of dollars. And I thought, you know what? I know you love to write. Do you want to take a crack at this? And I said, yes. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to ask. I would love to do that. Send me what you have. And so they sent me what they had, and it was two and a half pages of bullet points. And I said, well, well, where's the rest of it? You guys have been working on this for about six or seven months. And he said, no, that's it. And I said, okay, well, you know what? This is a start. So we'll start with this. And that was the beginning of what, uh, of the writing process with my dad. And so from there we had multiple, well, weekly, if not two or three times a week, phone calls, conference calls together to just kind of gather all of the information and start the wheels turning on what could this book be. Well, what I love about the book, let me just interject this here, is that while you call it fiction, it is based on real characters. And so it's highly believable and it's very relatable what those characters experience you know, we've been there, especially mm -hmm. the, the lead person, McKinsey, who is uh, learning how to be a good salesperson. So anyone in business, whether they have the official role of salesperson or uh, own a business and need to make sure they do business development, this book to me is just phenomenal. And and so the end product, it to me, is another conversation. We'll have an interview and go deeper about some of the principles that are taught there, the steps and the rules. But um, for today, I want to just focus on what are the things that went into the writing of this book? Because it took you t five years once you started, and that's a long time. And so um, for people who have written things themselves, that's... It's like, okay, so what went on there? What was, how did you establish the relationship up front as to who was going to do what? What were your roles? And I think this is relevant for anyone who is either in business with another person or needs to work effectively with a, a peer or, you know, a coworker where uh, there's, a, there's this project that needs to be done and each of you has independent ideas of how it ought to be done. Mm -hmm. So how do you merge those together? What did, what did it take for you to do that? Because I know there had to have been some challenges too. There were definitely some challenges. I'd say a lot of trial and error, but when I step back and reflect on where we started and where we ended and what happened in the middle, I think about how in the beginning, I knew this was my dad's content. The, he owned it. This was him living as a salesperson day in, day out for 40 years. And this was the brilliance boiled down. 
because he was wildly successful as a salesperson. And I saw myself as kind of a mediocre salesperson. And my dad had tried to teach me some of his concepts early on, but at the time I wasn't ready to listen. I was thinking, you know what? You had a totally different role. What you did is not applicable to where I am and the situation that I'm in. So I don't think I can, I can use what, what it is that you're teaching. Now, fast forward a number of years and I realized, whoa, I was totally wrong. This is the type of material that can be used in any role in business, but also in life. And that's what started to happen. So the beginning portion of writing with my dad was really me just asking questions and asking more clarifying questions on, tell me what this step means and how did you use it? And tell me about this rule and how, how would you use that in a certain business situation? And so I was collecting all of these stories and you've got to know my dad a little bit. He's a visionary. He's an idea guy. He will think of an idea and run after it and then take a sharp right turn and then run in a different direction. So to be able to capture all of that is, is extremely challenging. But I knew, I knew I needed to get all of these stories out first and then sit back and look at them and understand, is there a thread? What's the connection? Is there some sort of underlying story there? Um, but what he wanted and the vision that he had was to basically bullet point everything and have a short snippet story for each step, for each rule. And as I talked to him, it seemed very disjointed. It seemed like it didn't flow. And it also felt like it, those things had already been said, already been done. And what I, what I started to feel was this needs some sort of foundational story from which we can tell the principles and show the principles instead of just talking at people, really bring them on a journey. And that took a few years <laughs> to figure out. But to answer your question, I think when we start working with someone, it's important to understand, you know, who's the dominant role and why, and also what are his or her strengths. And then also to take an honest look at ourselves and understand, okay, what truly is my role and what are my strengths and where are my holes? I need to understand where my blind spots are. And my dad and I also, obviously, we've had a lifetime together. So there's going to be some emotional baggage as well that we're going to have to get through because if I give him an idea of maybe my thought process of where I want to go with something, he might say, you know what, that's, that's not a great idea. And I have to take a step back and think, okay, this isn't my dad saying that I personally am wrong. I need to step back and realize we're talking about an idea. We're not talking about me. We're talking about this idea. And I think that helped to separate me personally with all of the, you know, background knowledge yes. and, and I wanna, on what we had. I want to pause there for a moment because I think this is um, an important point to emphasize. Definitely this connects with people in family-owned businesses where you have different generations involved in the business. And we can hold images of somebody, uh, in the case of a parent from when the child was, you know, that was younger, way younger, and carry that forward and, and see them through that lens that's no longer applicable. Mm -hmm. But it can also happen in business. My two business partners and I have now worked together for 28 years. And it's important even today for us to have a fresh perspective about each other that just because I was a certain way several years ago or I responded in a certain way or one of them did doesn't mean that that is the lens through which I should look at them today and that's easy to say and hard to do yes yes we have to really um, become first of all aware of mm -hmm. what we're doing and because there's baggage everywhere you know, <laughs> if, if you've been anywhere for any length of time there's there are things that have happened there's a history mm -hmm. that is important 
not to apply to a new situation. So I just wanted to make that point that this is not just father daughter. This is any relationship that you've had over a period of time. Even in my uh, with my husband and me, we've been married now 37 years and so there are you know things that that I could think from the past that aren't appropriate or applicable today. Mhm. Absolutely. So I just think that that probably was one of the key things as you just mentioned that could create barriers. And I think it did early on. It I really had to work through and be very self-aware of what it was that I was dealing with emotionally. And after, you know, I would work on something for a week and then I would present it back to my dad and basically read to him what I had written. And he would just have this long pause of silence. <laughs> and he would say, you know, I think you almost have it. And then he would go on and give me 12 different ways that I should have written it. (laughs) And I would hang up the phone and just kind of be very deflated because I had worked so hard to develop what I had written and then I'd presented it and I was told that's not it. And, you know, in writing with someone else or collaborating with someone else on a project, that happens. And we have to be aware of, okay, step back. You had some really good ideas in here, but he wants to take it in a different direction. And we have to be okay with that. But also in doing that, I had to realize what it was in the writing that I felt was non-negotiable. I thought, you know what, this key point is important for these reasons. And I needed to communicate that to my dad and say, okay, I understand that you want to take it in a different direction, but this is why I have it this way. And I think it's really important. And this is why. So it was a lot of, um, I think, internal work (laughs) as Mm -hmm. well to work with him. Um, I think, as you said before, sometimes we have this lens of this is who he was. And so this is who he is now. Some of that still is true. I do know that my dad is a great starter of projects, but not necessarily a great finisher of projects. And I do know that about myself as well. I I can start an idea, get excited about an idea, but then the actual follow through is hard for me to really hit that finish line well. So I had to understand, okay, I have to push through what I'm not good at here, my weakness, because my dad's also weak in that area. So I've got to step it up and, and really push myself here. So I think it's good to, we, it's that weird balance of, I know who he is, but I can't attack him for what he is. I need to understand he's got a lot of wisdom to bring to the table and a lot of great ideas And I know that together we're going to create something better than if I was writing this alone or if he was working on this project alone. And there were many times where we just kind of came to loggerheads and would just take a break, an extended break. And then he would come back and say, okay, Katie, I think what we have to do is figure out why, revisit the reason why we're doing this. Why? Do you, did you say yes to this project? And I want to tell you why I want to do this project. And what we found was we had the same goal. He mentors a lot of people. I mentor a lot of people. What we wanted to create was something that could help that next generation in learning those classic skills of building relationships when right now it seems like we rely too much on technology to build our relationships for us. Mm -hmm. But what we don't understand is there's this foundational piece of the personal to personal interaction that is fundamental to all relationships. And so when we came back to, we want to help the next generation to learn these classic skills, we had that goal and we could focus on that goal instead of, you know, attacking one another's ideas. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you mentioned something that I think is really important when we have a relationship with someone where we perceive them to be either in a position of authority over us or 
in some way, you know, the expert or better than uh, or elevate them in some way, then we can fall into deferring and, and going along with instead of speaking up and standing our ground for what is important to us. And I want to acknowledge you for growing yourself to the point where you saw the importance of doing that because you ended up with a better product in your book mm -hmm. by, I won't say pushing back so much, but standing up for what you felt was a better way to approach, you know, maybe a scene or a chapter that led to it being more effective overall. Because if you had taken the route of, well, he's the expert, he knows, I'll do it, go along, your energy would have been impacted. Your joy in the pro pro I think, project would have been affected. And um, you probably felt a lot better about yourself when you started really speaking up for your points and, and dealt more as equals. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a challenging balance as well because I do want to honor his curriculum. He's the one that put it together. And here I am wrapping a story around it. So I do want to honor what he's done, but yet I want to create a story that's relatable and accessible to the people that we supposedly are writing this for. And so I needed to understand how to communicate that to him without, um, really offending. And I think that is, that's tricky um, be, with anyone. And mm. with my dad, you know, we can, we can elevate and discuss heatedly certain things and know that, you know what, we're still going to be father daughter at the end of the day. Whereas in other projects, some people might think, oh no, our relationship is going to fracture. So I think I had some cushion there also of, but and as we started to work with one another, and I think he started to respect a little bit more of what I wanted to bring to the table, we were able to really hash out certain things and just get into it and have a really good time and laugh about it right after we had a heated discussion. So it, um, it became something that we both got really passionate about and we recognized, okay, we're talking about the book, not about each other. We're talking about this project we're working on. And as we continue to work with each other, we strengthened our relationship and we're able to be more candid as the process went along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's obviously the outcome you want. And I think you're, another key point there is not to take it personally, even it, 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 and that's really hard when you're the one that's done the writing to separate yourself, your writing from who you are as a person mm -hmm. so that you can listen in a detached way about this information you're receiving. And I think that's so true for many of us. If we've been working hard on something, whether it's something we've written or whatever kind of project it is, and we are looking for at a boy, at a girl, or, you know, a positive, and we get, whoa, <laughs> comments, <laughs> feedback that doesn't affirm what we've done. It's so important to detach from that information and, and really think objectively what's useful here and what I'm hearing. Because, and I think it goes back to a point you all make in the book about trust. When you have this solid foundation of trust and mutual respect, then it's solid and you're not feeling at risk that it's going to get destroyed. And I think that's what you were saying with you and your dad. And I think that's true in a business relationship too. If you have that common um, mutual respect and trust, then you know that the other person is not really trying to put you down or it's, it's not about you. 
-hmm. And I think that's what we can all struggle with when we put our heart and soul into something and make it about us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Spot on. (laughs) (laughs) So what are some things that actually changed about your relationship? I'm assuming for the better when you think about the first year to the fifth year, what what is, how did it evolve? Great question. I, I think it, when we strengthen, as you said, that respect, that trust, we were able to really be more ourselves. I think my dad early in the process was tiptoeing around certain things because like, his example or the example of, well, I think you almost have it, but not quite. And in reality, it was, you know, he hated it. (laughs) (laughs) And then, you know, fast forward a few years, I would bring him, you know, what I wrote or a dialogue that was in the book. And he'd say, oh, that is garbage, Katie. We got to work on this. Let's, let's role play. And that's how we came up with a dialogue that actually feels real is because we were actually role playing those discussions together and that allowed it to be applicable to any situation because that's that's how it goes in conversations so i think as we grew in knowledge of each other but also where we were going we were able to i guess it's kind of the the quote in the book, and we've heard it before, you've got to go slow to go fast. So that, that first, those first few years, it was really figuring out how do we work together? What is it that we're going for? Where do we want this direction to go? And then as we developed it, we developed also our relationship together and we were able to come to decisions much quicker because we could just get straight to the point. And we knew, you know what, I'm not trying to offend you, but this is, this is wrong and I need you to fix it. So I think there's um, a quickness that's allowed when you've built that trust. Mm-hmm. That's a, a, an excellent point. And I think of that with um, my writing and my business partner, Denny's writing. I used to tiptoe around with his writing or just go along with whatever he wrote. And now it's like, get rid of that. Get rid of that. <laughs> Because neither of us takes it personally. We know right. that the goal is to have a good product at the end, exactly. whatever it is that we're, we're doing. So I think that that accelerates, like you say, go slow first to get into a rhythm. And then once you hit your stride, wow, it can really, really take off. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the key lessons that you learned in this process that um, my listeners might be able to take away and apply in their own lives? There are so many. What do I pick? <laughs> I think actually I want to step back just really quick to give a little bit more context. So I worked in sales for about 11, 12 years. And then I after my second son was born, I stayed home full time. And during this time I was doing some odd jobs, but it was also during that time that my dad, I learned about my dad writing the book. And then also he invited me later on to write the book with him. So I was a full time stay at home mom when I started writing this book. And that first year was all about listening and learning and understanding what he was teaching. And it, Truly, in that second year, I realized that I could start implementing these steps and these rules in my volunteer roles, in my family, in my personal life. And I I think that was actually a big key to figuring out how to write the story because it wasn't just applicable for sales. It was applicable in a wide swath of of situations. Mm -hmm. And when I started to implement these steps and rules that we teach in the bestseller, people started to react differently to me in a really good way and started, I, I, well, the concept of general access where you know people to favorable access where they know you and they trust you, that I'd never heard of those concepts before my dad told me about them. And using those in volunteer roles where, you know, you've got your volunteers, they aren't paid to do their role, but they have a passion and figuring out and asking questions of them to figure out why is it that they're spending their time here? 
What is it that drives them? How can I help them to do their role in a way that they absolutely love it? And so I, in using that in my personal life, I think it strengthened the book. And also when I went back to work, I used the steps and the rules to get four job offers in three months for a salary way above that I had been paid before after being out of the working world for six years. And it just showed me this, these steps, these rules, when I implement them, when I have them forefront in my mind, can really open doors to relationships and to opportunities that I had never known I could do before. Well, you mentioned the one. We'll, we'll have to have another conversation to go into some of the steps and rules, but that go slow to go fast. Talk a little bit more about how you were able to apply that and what that did for you. The go, I think we all want things to go faster than they actually do in real life. And so having that top of mind, we understand, you know, we might just have a meeting in mind and I've got to get my answers in this meeting immediately. And so that's when we go just full bore and we have a bunch of questions and we lead and we control the meeting and we forget that our client across the table from us wants to be listened to, understood, and valued. And so when we take a step back, that go slow, take a step back and really give the control over to our client in, by asking the questions of them so that we can be in the posture of listening and making sure they feel heard, that, that changes the dynamic completely. And before, I was always go fast and just go fast. <laughs> <laughs> and by realizing, oh, wait, I don't have that trust with this person. I have to develop it. And this meeting, it's really about the dialogue to build the trust. It's not about, I want to tell this person everything I know because I want to feel smart and I want them to know that I'm smart. That, that changes my perspective completely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, we're about at our time, but I want to ask you one more question about your dad. What is something about him that you came to appreciate more deeply as you worked with him in this process? I knew he's, he's always been passionate and he's always wanted to help others. What I gained from writing this book with him was how deep that passion goes and how he truly wants the best for the other person. And not just seeing it in my relationship with him, but also in talking with others about the stories that he told me. I had to do research and, and talk with them about it. And to hear them talk about my dad in ways of, I just don't know where I'd be without what your dad did for me. I, that's, pri that's priceless. I, there's no way that I would have even discovered that had I not asked questions of the people who he had worked with before. And so that was just so special to me. And my guess is it brought the character to life that is sharing the wisdom mm -hmm. um, that he has had. It, it, um, the, the, you were able to go deeper and wider in, in that understanding. That's great. I love that. Well, I'm really looking. Is there anything else you want to say about the process? And Well, your story actually, or your question made me think of one other thing, which was okay. hearing the stories about our loved ones is priceless. And oftentimes we never go and ask those questions of the people that maybe our parents or our grandparents or even our children, who they work with and what they did that meant something to someone else. And those are maybe the, even the most precious stories because we see our loved ones from one perspective, mm -hmm. but to be able to have the opportunity to ask questions from a totally different perspective that bring forth the wisdom, but also just the level of empathy and emotion and what 
our loved one means to someone else, I think brings a whole new level of respect for our loved ones. So I just want to share that. that and, and what I, I'm getting chills as I hear you describe that, because that's the kind of thing we could do uh, every day or any day without writing a book, but just <laughs> to appreciate this person and what they mean to other people. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and get the perspective of others. Because one of the things that can do is expand our own appreciation of who they are. And now we've got multiple lenses mm -hmm. that we're using to view them, not just our own limited one. And so we can, it seems to me, approach them in a fresh, new way. And that gratitude and appreciation for who they are in the world mm -hmm. seems like would be expanded and feel just feel different. I totally agree. <laughs> well, Katie, um, tell us uh, more about how people can connect with you because you have um, you've written this book that I believe is going to be very impactful for a, a lot of people because it is so much about relationship building and how to do it right, and it's in the context of a very engaging story. I just loved reading about the characters and who they became. They weren't static, you know, um, paper doll kind of characters. They had depth. <laughs> they weren't perfect. They made mistakes. And so they were relatable. And I just thought that added a richness to your story. And so I know that folks listening are going to want to learn more about you. Where can they connect with you and learn more about the book? Thanks for asking. Uh, website is www.katiebishop.us, and that's spelled K A T I E, Bishop, B I S H O P, dot US. I call it dot us. So, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. my dad doesn't have a social media presence, so I'm kind of the face for us. And sure. that's why it's under katiebishop.us. That's and then great. from there, you can actually download a few sample chapters right on the website, and that'll give you a taste of what the book is about. And I, I think everyone will really enjoy reading those chapters and then also want to read the entire book. Yes. And that is March 31st. Yes. The book will be, will be available launched. on yes. Amazon. Yes. So I will be an early review writer because I thank just you. loved it. And it's definitely a five-star book. So I oh, highly recommend thank you, people add that to their um, book list. And um, thank you so much, Katie, for being with me. And also just for the great work you and your dad have done and are doing in the world, mentoring other people and spreading this important um, lessons learned and principles that can be applied, like you said, in any situation, not just sales. Well, Meredith, thank you so much for your time, but more importantly, for your questions, for reading the book, and for asking such good questions and getting to the depth of what's going on behind the scenes. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Well, that's part of my curious nature. I love doing that, and that's why I just enjoy this podcast so much because it allows me to bring on very special people like you who are doing great work in the world and give you um, more exposure to other people. Thank you so much, Meredith. Thank you, Katie. Thanks for tuning in to the Strong for Performance podcast. Now head over to growstrongleaders.com to learn how our tools can increase your impact with clients and expand your business. And while you're there, grab our free ebook, The Five Secrets to Getting Better at Anything. Until next time, I'm Meredith Bell. Make it a great day.